So hi, we're on the Growing Podcast here with Justin from Ocean City Soundtrack. We're going to ask him some questions today. I'm going to start. Okay. So what inspired the creation of the band? And can you tell me what the band name means? Like the creation of the band? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And the band name? Oh, my gosh. Um, let me, sorry, I'm going to go find somewhere to hide out. Uh, um, let me think. Okay. Creation of the band, band name. Oh, man. Uh, 1997, 96. I knew Josh in high school. Um, and uh, I think he came into a video store I was working at and said, he said, hey, I want to put a band together and you should sing in it. And so I joined a band that was already going called Saddest Girl Story. And then and then it kind of fizzled out shortly after I tried to take over for two guys. Uh, one played guitar and one sang. And so I tried to do both. And it just, I don't know, it just wasn't working. But that 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 outfit kind of split into two different factions. One became Amp 176 and the other became Motion City Soundtrack. So that's kind of how Josh and I started. And then um, I don't know, the name was like it pulled out of the ether by Josh's brother for something that he was going to do. And we just stole it from him. <laughs> um, yeah. And then, but it, kind I don't know, it kind of, you know, it, it was sort of one of these open-ended things. Like it, I liked that it was just so, we, I didn't understand what it meant. And then we could kind of plug in whatever we wanted to, to make it mean what we wanted. And I think anybody that heard it could do the same thing, but we got in trouble back in the day because the first, the first album that came out was called I Am The Movie mm-hmm. and and it ended up in the soundtrack section of most stores so nobody could find it oh. because of the Motion City soundtrack. So they thought it was for a movie yeah. called Motion City and it got really confusing. But, um, you know, I guess luckily nobody buys music anymore so, <laughs> so we don't have that problem. I don't know. Luckily? That's no, that's yeah. not the right word. Um, uh, yeah. I just think it's fitting that your name is Motion City Soundtrack and you and Josh met at like a video store that you're working at yeah mm, that's interesting well i mean we did meet in high school his band he had a band called superette that he played guitar in and or did he yeah he played guitar and sang but he he played bass up until that band and then for some reason he played guitar in it and he sang and i just i have this memory of being in duluth minnesota at a coffee shop in a mall i think playing a show and uh, like we we our bands, like I had a high school band called Slide Coaster, and we played a lot in Duluth, St. Paul, and Minneapolis, Minnesota. And then my, I think he even tried out for my, you know, high school band uh, after his band fell apart. And but I didn't show up for the rehearsal, so I it was yeah, it was. And, and then he decided it would be a good idea to be in a band with me. Yeah. Um, yeah. Oh, sorry. Mm-hmm. Uh, my wife is calling me. <laughs> is that I, I don't know how this works with oh my god sorry i'm gonna see if i can hello okay what? hello i don't know if i disappeared or if i was still there um, okay side. it's all good okay wait so you mentioned that the band name is like interpreted like you can interpret it however you want to and you said it means a lot for different people including you and the members so what does mm-hmm. it mean to you specifically uh I think it was just this idea of like, like for me, and I, I can't speak for everybody else, but, and then also over time, things change. Mm-hmm. Like you write a song. Oh man, hold on. Um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, as far as the name, like, I, I think for me, it kind of um, was sort of like wherever the action is, mm-hmm. you know, that place. And I grew up in the sticks out in like Matamidi, Minnesota, Stillwater, kind of middle of nowhere, a lot of trees. And, and, and so I, you know, as soon as I could, I, I moved, you know, 1994, I moved to, um, to Minneapolis and then just kind of hopped around from house to house. But, but I kind of just, it was just like, that's where I, in high school, I went to first Avenue and seventh street entry and let it be records and electric, um, like all of these places, cause it was nothing where I grew up and it was just really exciting. And so I, th- I think that's kind of what I thought of is just like that place that you find everything, um, you know where the action is mm-hmm. so oh, to speak. okay, okay. that's know. cool i like that one all right i don't know uh, so congrats on your newest release crooked ways how do you feel about the Thanks. response to it so far of course wait 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 what was that last one how do you feel about the response to it so far oh it's been good i think i mean i've been trying not to read as many of the comments uh lately just in the last few years because i tend to get 
Yeah, I, t- I don't know. Like, I love responding to people, but I usually do that on one-on-one, like, messaging. I don't know what this meant, but... Uh, <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah. But the... But the... Yeah, yeah. So, I, I don't know. I mean, I like the song. I I forgot about the song. Um, I, I have a terrible memory, so I just can't remember anything. But I... I think it's, I don't know. I think it's been good. I don't, I don't know. I feel like people that don't like you aren't going to take the time out to tell you how much they don't like you unless they used to like you at some point and don't anymore. Mm-hmm. That's my guess yeah. there. So yeah. I don't know. Uh, good. I'm just going to say gr- it's been amazing. Everyone, yes. loves it. you hear this song, people are like, oh my God, what am I doing listening to anything but this? I should listen to this on repeat yeah. over and over and, and over <laughs> um, <clears throat> I mean, I do that, agree. Yeah, I also are, agree. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Oops. Oh. Oh my God. Sorry. I'm still like figuring out this whole Zoom business, and I uh, and now I can see both of you at the same time, which is nice. Yo, oh my God. That's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> um, Look, I'm 112 years old, so. You know. uh, uh, so I just heard about Instagram. To be honest. Um, did you actually? No. Oh, oh, okay. I was, okay. yeah. <laughs> no, but that's kind of it. I think, yeah, Snapchat ruined me because uh, I tried oh, to Snapchat. figure that out. And it was like, it was just pointless because if I, like, it takes me so long to do anything. Why would I do something and then have it just disappear? Yeah. Exactly. So, so it kind of, you know, and then there's all this other cool stuff that's coming out, but it's just, it's just too much work. Like, honestly, and I would not be on any of these social media platforms if I didn't have to be. It's just, I, I just, I'm not that person. I don't need to tell people what I'm doing. Um, mm-hmm. But I have found in, sorry, I'm just going off on okay. a tangent here. It's I found okay. a recent time with like, you know, I guess waking up to the way that the world is in the last few years, um, trying to find a way to use that. And I'm kind of, you know, doing this, but now I'm at a place where instead of just responding in anger and just like frustration and chaos with, you know, with what's going on, um, I feel like I'm trying to figure out a way to sort of utilize those things to just spread information that, you know, maybe whoever's putting it out might only be able to reach a hundred people or 350 people. But if I post it, then maybe it reaches more people and people get more informed. I don't really know what I'm doing. I'm just, you know, I've I've been, I didn't mean to turn this into a therapy session, but kind of like, uh, uh, I was in a lot of pain because I had like some messed up, you know, spine, nerve, back issues mm-hmm. for many months. And then as soon as I got a surgery and I was in bed recuperating and recovering, um, I couldn't like move a whole lot. And so all I could do is just look at the Internet. And that's when I really started getting like posting out of like anger and frustration and, and all this stuff. And then I kind of took a step back and I'm like, OK, let's really think about like what can I do just even in my own like community area my family like whatever and then just kind of start from there and build out and so i've been kind of doing that anyway i'm sorry i got way off i don't know what the original question was i love your tangents though yeah they're awesome yeah (laughs) great i saw you guys live at the beginning of this year and i was like you would just go on tangents in between songs i'm like i love this so much this is oh great great. thank you yeah i i you know in the past the band would usually start playing to you know play me off uh and then i did my solo tour and then I got to just do whatever I wanted. And then I kind of, I think I got more confidence to just sort of, you know, say whatever I felt. And if it was two minutes, which feels like an eternity on stage, great. Or if it was like 20 seconds, fine, mm-hmm. you know, but trying to really be in the moment and like respond to whatever I'm feeling uh, instead of coming up with the scripted thing, which I've never done, which I'm just terrible at. And then also like the, just making it up as you go along. I'm about 50, 50, half of the time, people are moved brilliant and then the other half of the time people are just staring at me like just play a song dude I, I <laughs> your mouth and sing. That's fair. yeah all right um so can you tell me a little bit about your writing process and how it's changed from that first record to now uh i think most of it is done remotely you know like we send things back and forth to each other and in uh you know I guess between like 2014 and 18, I got a little better at recording and like demoing. I don't think I can record anything that I would put out, but I can demo it in a way that people can now understand 
what it is that I'm going for. Because I hear most of it up here, but I don't know how to like articulate it in words or I just don't have the the te technological skills to like do things the way that I want. Mm -hmm. But I'm slowly getting better and I can now actually record vocals that sound decent and guitars that sound okay. And unfortunately I can still just program drums. Uh, what was the original question? Like how uh, recording process? Yeah, the writing process, yeah. Yeah, or yeah, writing. And so yeah, for Motion City the past, you know, since I want to say maybe even if it kills me, but for sure my dinosaur life, we just sent things back and forth to each other and then we get in a room and then play. And I think on panic stations, we got back to the idea of us being in a room writing. And, and so that it was like, we kind of wrote together and then we, I mean, we all had ideas, but we wrote together and then we, recorded live which is different than anything i'd done and that was so much fun and i hope to do more of that someday mm -hmm. um oh yeah i actually did that earlier in february early no late february early march late february in la i was recording solo album number two and i got to play it live which is really fun um but that got shut down real quick after you know everyone started dying and getting sick yeah 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 <laughs> um so where was your headspace while creating Crooked Ways? You're asking, that was, let's see, let's see. How far back was that? 112 years. Oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> no, I mean, it was, it was a wild, like I, I did, you know, I, I wasn't, I think like during that whole time I was still, I, f I felt like a failed filmmaker because that's what I was trying to do for so many years. And then I just kind of fell into the music thing. Like I, I, I was doing it uh, like for fun and on a whim. And Josh was sort of the controller of the, you know, what's the word? What's a better way to say that? He, he was sort of like the manager of the band, like that he was in the band. Like, he just made everything happen. And, um, and so I think that at that time I was, I, I don't know, it was somewhere around, like, even if it kills me in my dinosaur life, that I decided I was a musician. I was like, okay, I'm going to call myself that, and I'm going to be okay with that. And I'd already made, like, two or three albums. Mm -hmm. um, so I can't remember, this is why it would have been great to have somebody else on who could answer these questions. <laughs> like, I don't have specifics or dates or, or, like, I don't remember things well, but I can make shit up and I can tell you a story. Oh my um, God. that I can do uh, but I do know that I met Alex Patsavis at some point and she was the woman who did like all of that music like if you watched any TV show in the 2000s she was the one who put all the music together for those shows mm -hmm. and 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 I think she was responsible for getting the acoustic version of fell in love on Gossip Girl which was huge for us That's awesome. Um, and so I met with her and then we talked and we talked about the the book and the director and the movie and then i watched the director's movies and i watched and I, I just like studied a lot and i read the books and then i and then i just kind of i think josh i think josh and i think josh might have come up with the guitar part first and then you know and then we all just kind of jumped in mm -hmm. and then yeah i don't remember but i i did try to write it from the point of view of like the story but then also there's like a couple other things you know with me it's always usually like addiction kind of lands in there somewhere mm -hmm. and so i love this idea of like you know if you take the vampire part of the story out and you just make it about addiction that's really cool but then it can also be about you know um uh trauma maybe like there's just lots of different things and so i I've gotten to this place over the last few years where I try to put as many different stories into one thing and leave it open-ended in some ways, but very specific in others and just kind of allow people to find whatever they want in it. And I don't, I don't know how I stumbled upon this, but that's just kind of been my approach in the last decade or two. Well, decade or two. What does that mean? 2010. I don't know. Yeah. It's been like, <clears throat> let's say 15 years. I've been kind of slowly getting there. Um, so yeah, I, did I answer the question? I don't know. Yes. That yeah. Some there's some bits of something in there. Yeah. Are you gonna edit this at all? <laughs> it's like nice and amazing, 
or am I just going to look like an idiot? Don't answer that question. Uh, you will just be uh, rambling. Okay. That's, that's good. That's good enough for me. Yeah. It's great. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so what band or artist influences influence your music? Oh my God. I don't know where to begin. I'm going to say, I mean, there's so many, most, most of them are from the nineties, like pavement archers of loaf, uh, Ben folds five. Oh my God. This is so hard. Uh, jaw box, flaming lips, uh, boo Radley's. Um, I mean, I'm just naming off bands. I don't know. Uh, a lot of that, like, stuff that sounded kind of weird and you know it was labeled alternative but that, <laughs> for lack of a better word um like all of that shit and then yeah and the, you know just all of the books i mean i read a lot so mm -hmm. books movies just all of it just kind of goes together and i just i feel like i'm just stealing like this word from over here and this word from over here and i'm just kind of putting things together the sources are great um yeah, I don't know, but I I think I've been on this trip of just like trying to create from a purely instinctive level, like place, and that instead, you know, I think when we started, it was all me, me, me. This is how I feel. I, I, I feel this. I feel that. I feel this. Isn't that important? Isn't that important? Listen to me. And now it's kind of like I don't feel this urgency to tell people how I'm feeling in the same way. I think maybe it's disguised more. In stories but there's still a lot of i and me you know in, in the songs mm -hmm. I, I, I have <laughs> so i just feel off okay yeah. yeah it's okay uh so what made you choose the name crooked ways and is there any meaning behind the cover art because there were like spider webs and there was like a spider on it and then there was a hand coming out of the corner well, I think, okay, oh, this is interesting. I think originally we, the song, we had just called the song Spider for many, you know, years, like while we were right, or whatever, not you, but like as we were creating it. And I think I just, for some reason, I was, <laughs> was really drawing, uh, read the Anansi Boys from uh, Neil Gaiman, which was like a, an offshoot from his book, American Gods, which is amazing. And they made it into a TV show. I think recently I only saw the mm -hmm. first season loved um, but it, and what's crazy is that they cast Ian McShane as as the uh, as Odin and that was like I that when I was reading the book that's who I saw mm -hmm. in my head and it just blew my mind so anyway point being that <laughs> I think I grew, like I was even though I was writing about this one thing over here I was kind of drawing from Neil Gaiman and I just had this I don't know for some reason I kept thinking spider mm -hmm. in my head and then I don't remember when oh yeah I think we were just all going through the the lyrics honestly I don't think we named it until we put it out <laughs> I don't <laughs> like I don't know this is like this is what happens when you do a lot of drugs don't do drugs uh kids and I think that yeah we um Anyway, so yeah, uh, it was just going through the lyrics and, and sort of going like, is anything stand out or is there anything that works? And we all kind of threw our ideas at the wall. And I think Crooked Ways was the one that just made the most sense. And my friend Lydia Liza is an amazing artist. And uh, and I was just commenting on how like her art reminds me of, oh God, I can't remember his name. Is it, I'm going to mess this up. Egon, no. There's an artist anyway. I want to say Egon... There's a Rachel's album that has the name of this artist in it. And I can't remember Egon Shield or something. I'm totally messing that up. But I told her like, Hey, your work reminds me of that artist. And she's like, get the hell out of here. That's my favorite artist. And I thought, Oh, let's take something and let's do it together. I just saw it as a sign. Mm -hmm. And then, so we just, she sent me like maybe 50 different <laughs> ideas and hands and faces and things coming out of heads. And like, it was really crazy. It was really cool. Yeah. And then, we finally settled on that one and that's yeah for a while until we you know well she worked on it and i said boo yay uh and that's kind of how that came together all right that's really cool solid yeah, yeah. <laughs> um so is there a certain feeling you want your listeners to have while listening through your discography <clears throat> um 
I want. Sorry, I was trying to think of a joke and nothing came to me. <laughs> uh, they got to be serious. Damn. Yeah. Just, you know, hopefully they, I just want people to dig what we do. And to, and yeah, I don't know. I, I, I'm not, I don't like to tell people what to do, but I, I would like them all to just at least, at least listen to every album from beginning to end, you know, 20 times a day. That would be nice. Um, Pretty cool. I, I don't know. I, I just, yeah, if people dig it, awesome. Uh, hopefully it brings you joy or it, you know, helps. Uh, I get a lot of messages and I think I kind of like, up until recently, I sort of, I'm learning to how to take compliments and to say things without cringing. And a recent thing I thought of that I can say is that I've had a lot of people send me messages that said like, we, you know, help, you know, we've saved their lives or, or we helped them through a hard period or our music touched them in some way. And that's truly like above and beyond any hopes, dreams and aspirations that I ever had in playing music that I would write something that would resonate with someone in such a way. I, I was not trying to do that. And my wife pointed out that my music is basically music therapy and that's how I sing it. And I didn't realize that until maybe a couple of years ago. Which I'm really slow uh, when I do obvious things that most people get. Uh -huh. uh, I focus on minutia more than the big picture. Uh, so I, t I tend to miss things that are right in front of me. Did I answer your question? You did. Yes, yeah. you did. Very well. Did. Very well. Okay. Uh, so off the top of your head, I want you to describe your music in three words. They don't have to work together. Uh, man. I'm going to go with specifically unspecific nostalgia. That's very good. I like that. Wow. I like that one because that, that's like to a T. That fits it okay. really well. Yeah. Well, then I got lucky. Uh, wow. That's what comes to mind. Because like, like when I think about it now, I'm like, God, it's so weird. Because I was talking to my wife about this. Uh, I don't know why. But I was saying like, it's really hard. Like I, like I listen to other things and sometimes I cringe and I go, oh, sh is that what we sound like? And my wife's like, no, it's weird. It, like, so for some reason, whatever I'm doing, I, I still think it's working. But it's like you're you're putting in these real specific things, yet you're leaving it like it very open almost like swiss cheese or something and and it i don't know at least that's kind of the image i think of is i, mean, I don't think of swiss cheese when i think of our band but <laughs> there are very specific things that you hear in these songs and it's it's so specific and yet the songs are so like general too so i don't know how i'm able to do that in words but i'm i I, I enjoy that. I enjoy that it's not so, like, you know, mm -hmm. specific. Like, this is how you must feel. It's working, and, so. Yeah, it is. Have the words in the moment. I wish that, if, if there was one thing I wish I could do was be more like an improv artist who could just, like, whip things out and amaze. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. it takes me two to three hours to, like, if... If you were to give me all these questions, give me like a couple weeks, I could come back and like wow you. But unfortunately, I'm just not that good at on the off the cuff, on the spot things. I get that completely. Are... Yeah. It's completely valid. Yeah. Uh, so you guys have been dead for like four years. Were you guys working on anything new in that time? No, we were dead. <laughs> Did you say dead? You did say dead. I right? did say dead. Dead, yeah. Heard that. I'm gonna use that. Um, <laughs> like, oh yeah, so you've been dead for a couple months. You haven't called me. It's in, you know. I like it. Thanks for the slang. Okay. Uh, what were we working on? I think everybody pretty much like now we're at a point because we didn't like okay, so we all had kids and I think it was I was secretly freaking out. Jesse was publicly freaking out, and he kind of was the one who said, I don't think I can do this. And then I and then I was like <sighs> I don't think I can do this. And then Josh was like, I've been telling you guys I can't do this. So I think between the three of us with kids, we're like, we just need a break for our mental sanity. Mm -hmm. And yeah. 
and and in typical fashion me taking a break meant writing a, another record the solo record uh because i just can't help myself and so kind of as a off like as a whim like i'm gonna see if i can write drums and bass because i played neither and i don't really understand music like I, I i understand it somewhere up here that i i'm unaware of and i know how to play guitar kind of so so i just i wrote a bunch of songs and then um i was like oh these aren't bad i'm gonna see if i can make this and i, I and like i knew josh was trying to do more producing and he had produced a bunch of stuff in the past and i just like working with him but it'd be fun to do it in a different thing where i get to call the shots and he um yeah and so we you know, I mean, it took like seven months and some days we just work for 30 minutes and then they get a call like, oh, shoot, I got to go pick up my kid. You know, so it was kind of like one of these things that we pieced together. And uh, yeah. And then I was like, oh, maybe somebody would want to buy this. And then I sold it to Epitaph. And, then, you know, it was just kind of this thing that organically happened. Um, but it was really fun to be able to do exactly what I wanted to do. It, it, you know, when you're in a band with a bunch of people, you kind of have to fight out fight it out for your ideas which also is good because you have five different brains working on stuff and with me it's like you know some of it was i tried to play drum parts to the drummer and he was like okay this doesn't make sense like no human can actually play that <laughs> it's pretty cool so let's see what i can do to try to make that work and and it was great and it was amazing and then some song like there was a song called um um, not shoulder. It was the other S song. I'm trying to remember my own songs, man. I think I called it Swerve Driver song because it reminded me of Swerve Driver. Um, but anyway, but like he wrote the entire drum part to that. I was like, oh, play it like Swerve Driver, and he's like, okay, I got this. And then, you know, so sorry, I got off tangent again. But yeah, that's what I did. I just made music and went on a tour, and then wrote more music, and then just made a bunch of weird art that no one's seen and um uh, yeah just working on random stuff and i know like jesse I, I don't know exactly what he does i think he manages a bar or he works at a bar or he does something or, that involves booze and the selection and purchasing of it for a bar and i think matt's work he's like does music for cartoons i think he's got some cartoon in australia that he does like mainly but he's got a bunch of other stuff and, like josh i think josh was doing like a bunch of things in minneapolis from producing to um He's doing something weird, like on Twitch right now too. He's got it. Is it called? It's Chewdy, I T S C H E W D Y, and and like he's it, you know he's always been really good at video games and stuff. And I don't understand any of this, but he gets on Twitch and then he plays for people and he and he does some of that. And I know Tony is in L.A. doing. I think I think he's he's got a couple podcasts that he's producing, and then I think he. Yeah. And then he makes his own and he's plays drums and he's doing different things. So we're all kind of scattered. Mm -hmm. We live in four different states and we're all doing random things. So to get us to actually do a tour that we did earlier took, you know, a lot of planning yeah. to, to, so, and I think we were going to do another thing at the end of this year, but it got, or the early next year, but you know, everything got kind of, you know, I, I think we're going to we're supposed to do um, Slam Dunk Festival in May of 2021. But I have chronic asthma and I haven't really left my house, you know, much uh, except for the surgery and going to the woods for a week with my family. Mm -hmm. yeah, so I have did a couple. I of, you, you did. I don't know if I, uh, you did. You did. I, I do have a couple of follow up questions for you, though. Earlier, you had said you're working on another solo record. What can you tell us mm. about that? It's unfinished. I've got six <laughs> songs done, five originals, one cover. I originally wanted to do like, I wanted to work with a bunch of different producers and um, and put together a bunch of different bands and songs and sounds. And so I, I only got the first of what would have been five. I've got like 30 songs that I wanted to record. And so I wanted to do five different sessions and then pick the best four from each session. I make like a 20 song record, like guided by voices. Um, and, and then this happened. So I, you know, I'm kind of in this place where like, do I continue to do that or not? And then Epitaph, uh, you know, Brett Gurowitz produced the six songs that I did in LA and he was kind of pushing me to just put them out as an EP. And I'm like, oh, but I have this whole like concept that I want to do. And there's a story I want to tell. 
and I want to make this movie and this book that I'm writing and like put it all together. And it's like, bam, so much art. Like you're just going to um, go, this is dumb and not buy it or no. maybe, but you know, there was a whole point to it. And now that point is whatever, but I was talking to, there's a, there's a woman, she's this amazing woman. Her name is Chelsea who just directed this matches documentary. If you can see it, you should see it. It's amazing. And I was talking to her and she, hit me with this great quote. I don't know who it's attributed to, but that um, making art exactly the way you want to do it is a privilege. And maybe, and I'm just adding on to here. So I'm thinking maybe the point is that I should just, well, I thought, yeah, if when one picks a fight with the universe, you're probably going to lose. So maybe I should just put out what I have and change what how i want to do it and so my thought was maybe i just put out a bunch of eps over the next year or so when i can safely record stuff and then put out a playlist of the actual order of what it should have been as a full length if people want to you know ingest it that way because there is a movie and a book that i'm working on and trying to put together i you know who knows these are lofty ridiculous artsy fartsy yeah, goals but uh out there you could have like a release plan, plan like what Haley Williams did, which is like release everything in the EPs and then piece it all together in that final record. Yeah. So. Yeah, I just don't know if like it doesn't. I, I'm, I'm still like I'm, you know, I'm from an era where I, I ingested albums and I love to listen to things from beginning to end. But I know that people don't necessarily do that all the time nowadays. Um, and it, I think you know, I, I just don't understand. Look, I'm a total like Luddite when it comes to technology and pretty much somewhere in like the late 80s, I think, is where technology just like passed me by. So I've been playing catch up for 20, 30 years, I think. Uh, yeah. So to sort of add on to what you're saying, I think. I think that's probably what I'll end up doing is something in that vein, but I only have the one EP and I don't. My friend Tommy, who uh, he produced this EP I did for Record Store Day in 2019. Mm -hmm. And and so I wanted to go with him and try to do it even like, like sonically, the the LA session is like super hi-fi. And then like what I want to do with Tommy is like super lo-fi, like Guided by Voices, you know, early 90s, late 80s recordings. Um, and so he, he's like, I've got an idea where we can put the drummer in one corner of my garage and then I'll put all my stuff in the other corner of the garage and we'll wear masks and then we'll run the, um, you and the bass player can sit in your cars and we'll run the stuff out to you and you'll just play in your car and you'll sing in your car That's and we'll do this. And I'm like, oh my God, this is genius. Like I have to do this. And from a visual standpoint, it's amazing. And I could get a camera out there to just like capture this. So if and when, I think that that might be a way to do another session until you know i can safely be around people again that's definitely an interesting way to go about it yeah yeah i don't know i i just love trying weird shit and and um, seeing what happens and then mm -hmm. uh one final question since the okay. band is back in some capacity will there be new music or is it just going to be you guys are going to just tour i don't know uh we you know we never stop sending each other ideas so i would you know it's kind of like this thing where somebody gets excited and sends something and then a couple people are like oh yeah let's do something let's do something and then we start working on it and then it and then we just kind of stop and you know okay. so i i don't know what the future is but it was pretty cool to be able to do a tour and to have people come out and be excited about it mm -hmm. so i think that at the very least you know once people are able to tour and 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 people are able to go out and be safe and and all of that i think that we will do more but i i guess if i had to you know i don't like to say anything because i don't you know anything can happen anything can change but i think um you know for sure doing a tour every year or every couple years just to like have fun i think that is totally doable um as far as new music i I don't know because like you know trying to work on a record for four or six years and it just wasn't happening you know maybe it's about recording songs now yeah. i don't know maybe dps who knows yeah but i think that the the possibility is there it's just a matter of figuring out what we want to do 
And I think had the pandemic not happened, we would have had a more cohesive like plan. Let's let's do this. And and I think we've all kind of, you know, sequestered ourselves to, you know, our, our you know, states, houses, and we just haven't been talking a whole lot. Mm-hmm. So that's kind of where we're at. Is that a downer? I don't know. Maybe it's a good thing. I mean, I know you had said that when I saw you guys live. You're just like, this does not mean new music. And then you guys released that single that happened to just be unreleased. And I was like, holy shit, this means new music, doesn't it? And then you guys signed on what? to a new PR place. And I was like, holy shit, new music. And then you're like, we don't have new music. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I'm not. Look, I'm. You really should be talking to somebody else that actually knows what's going on. Because I'm, I'm more of a. I'm more of a, a creative mess. Like I make, I, I, I have ideas and then I try to implement them. And that's about as far as I go. I don't really know. Uh, like, yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. yeah. Makes plenty of yeah. sense. Yeah. Okay. So I, I can't answer anything definitively and I don't really know what any of that means. I'm trying to connect your dots of like no music. Yes. Music do PR person. Like I, I don't necessarily see that as meaning anything, but I guess I can understand that now after the fact. Yeah, from the outside, like yeah, like a fan, it kind of looks like the dots are connecting to something. Yeah, that's Mm -hmm. more of a big picture thing. And me, I'm just like, oh, here's a song, and like, oh, this is a way to promote it and just let people know. And oh, and here's a you know, so I'm like, oh, great, cool, that sounds fun. Yeah. Um, Okay. Or should I say that no, there's a master plan, like you know in place and i'm just a really good actor and i'm not telling you about any of it god that would be i know I'm, a, I'm, a shit. I'm sorry i'm a terrible person uh, <laughs> none of these answers are real too i just made them. i'm just making shit oh my up god. lying my way yeah. through it i'm wow. sorry i don't know what i'm doing i'm not actually justin i'm, I'm a, standing I'm a, caricature, I'm a caricature of who he might have been oh my god had he had a sedentary lifestyle and um you know no style all right okay yeah, i'm sorry i this is what I, do. Okay. I tend to derail things it's okay uh, you keep i think my kid is going crazy she's stomping on the floor right now uh oh so God. i think i need to get back to her uh okay. how are we doing on time are we we're getting very close uh, to the end we're almost okay. there. all right okay um, so we keep mentioning this 2020 reunion tour that you did. How did that happen? And what was it like, you know, like getting back on stage with everybody? Okay, this is a, a, a trifold question or response. But okay. uh, I think originally there was relief that we wouldn't have to keep chasing this thing, whatever this thing was, just constantly going on tour, writing a record, going on tour, writing a record. And I think we were just exhausted. So that felt really good. And then I could just make art in my house to be a dad be a husband great and then i think within like a year maybe it was two i think it was 2018 no was that it it was either early 2018 or like late 2017 like we hadn't stopped playing for very long and we got a call because one of our ma- well, our manager also works or he worked for live nation and uh and i think he just knew something about house of blues was looking to do like a um a new year's show and then we all were like i think this is kind of silly because it was just we just stopped playing like to do another show would be ridiculous Mm -hmm. uh at this point and then and then you know uh we just we kind of talked it out we thought about it and i think i think we thought okay let's just do one show it's fine Mm -hmm. we can do one show and then just not do anything and maybe we just make it a yearly thing we just do new year's eve every year and that'll be it and then we'll we'll die and the band will be done uh-huh. like you know and so and then i think that was for the 2018-19 new year but then the nhl wanted the room so they bought us out they just basically paid us not to play the show and we're like okay i guess this works because we didn't we thought it was kind of weird to just stop being abandoned and then to immediately play a show mm-hmm. um and then so they moved it to the next year and then i think when promoters found i don't know i'm making this up because i I i'm not doing it to be weird it's just this is what i guess happened yeah Mm -hmm. Uh, promoters saw that we were playing a show and thought oh shoot they're back let's would they want to play a show here and then a bunch of people made offers and were like you know like let's get them to do this and then our our touring 
our booking agent was like, hey, there's a bunch of interest for you guys doing a show or doing a tour. Would you want to do a full tour? And then we're like, oh, my God, this this is like why we stopped doing it because we can't tour. And then like so we had to like figure this all out. And then we finally figured out a way to do the least amount of touring that we could and just kind of one and done thing. And then, yeah, and then it's just I, I guess what this tells me is that don't ever say, you know, I will never do this again or I will always do a thing because you never know what's going to happen. Mm. And I think based on the tour, you know, being as successful as it was, that we are more likely to tour than not tour in the future. And that's something I can say because it's not absolute, but yeah, um, but that's kind of how it all came together. So again, a lot of this stuff is very organic and just kind of like it kind of things just kind of fall in place and then you see a pattern and then you go, Oh wait, actually this is, let's do this. I don't know. That's how I do it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Makes sense. Um, so for the last couple of questions, we'll shift away from music. And we'll go straight to death row. So if okay. you're on death row, what would your last meal be with a drink? I hope I'm not ever on death row. Me too. Uh, yeah. Let me think. I don't know. I'd probably have bubbly water. I really love Taste. that stuff. Taste. If they want to, you know, if they want to give me free bubbly water, that's awesome. I'll take it. Uh, no, I, I think, I mean, uh, I, I don't, I don't know. I just, yeah, you're stumping me with these questions. <laughs> uh, cinnamon toast crunch. I don't know. That's solid. Okay. That's good. Yeah. Cause like, I don't, you know, be like, I'm going to be dead soon. I don't need to worry about what I'm eating. Oh, this is dark, man. I don't. Yeah, I don't know if I like this question. Oh, I <laughs> sorry. It's not. It's not. I don't. I don't mean to attack you. I just. Oh yeah. Yeah, it's kind of. Uh, what about? What if you rephrased it with like, if you could only eat one thing ever again, and after you eat it, like ten minutes after you're finished, you die. There we go. There we that go. That would be a better <laughs> question because then it's like the weight of that, like death row and what that means, and like and I think about like you know killing people and all the stuff oh, this is bad news um yeah i think i still can't answer the question probably some sort of dessert i don't know okay all right uh, I, ice cream i'm a big fan okay, okay. Root beer. there we go <gasps> root 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 taste solid they're very good all right uh on a lighter note if you could live in one fictional world for a week where would you live I want to say Asgard just because I like saying it, but I mm -hmm. don't think, I, especially not anymore because it's gone. Oh, if you yeah, it's kind of destroyed. Uh, which I watched all of those movies over the course of the last couple weeks in order, and I saw so much more in them than I did when I originally saw them. Like I feel like those movies are like weird indie movies disguised as action films. Some of them more than others. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, I lost I lost my shit when uh, Thor and and have you seen them all? Yeah, I've seen them all. Oh, okay. you haven't? No. I want yeah. We my yeah, family but, did like a month of watching yeah. them all. But there's there's like a couple moments like between I I think from like God, what was the first one? Was it Black Panther? No, it might have been before that. But like a couple movies before that. Even some of the Iron Man stuff too. Yeah, screw it, all of them. Mm -hmm. uh, but there's these wonderful things in them that I didn't see before. Um, but fictional world, I don't know. Oh my gosh. Did you make all the food? Yeah. My wife just made all of the food that I was supposed to make. Oh. Uh, I, I screwed up the time of this interview. Okay. All right. Thank you. I didn't know she was home because she was gone. And that's why I was watching my kid. And I was like, can you play up here for a little bit by yourself? And she's like, okay. And then, um, so my wife must have come home in the interim because she was on her way. She was like 15 minutes away. But I have no idea how long this is going. You you look so like you're so dark over there. Yeah, and I'm just <laughs> into the abyss. He's faded into the darkness. The darkness. Oh, uh, fictional oh, world. Man. It's totally disturbing, and I probably wouldn't like it. But I'm gonna go with Twin Peaks because that was one of my favorites um, growing up. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's not fun. I mean, a version like a A side and a B side. Mm -hmm. uh, but something lighter. Ooh, any anywhere that that Hayao Miyazaki, you know, 
created. I'd say any one of his worlds. Well, maybe My Neighbor Totoro, you know, oh, that's okay. really, I don't know. They're all sad and beautiful, but I yeah. love his, the worlds he creates. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, him that's and his solid. company. That's solid. All right. Uh, so I have the honor of asking the last question, and every okay. single person we have spoken to have said the most important question. What okay. is your favorite color? Black, like the color of my soul. Cool. That was nice and edgy. I love it. <laughs> or, 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 or Twin Peaks, black is midnight on a moonless night. Whoa. That's All right. deep. Solid. The black it is. Black uh, it is. So as I said, that's all the questions we have today. Is there anything you'd like to plug? Plug. Oof. No. <laughs> I don't. Well, I, yeah, I don't know most, I don't know what motion, you know, motion cities, if all goes well, we will be playing a couple of shows in the UK in May, but we don't have anything else, uh, on the books. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. I have a, I'm part of a, God, I don't even know how to say it. I'm part of a, oh, an anthology, young adult anthology book so weird uh but uh uh somebody who was a fan uh reached out oh my gosh thank you uh and and asked if i'd want to write a story as part of this anthology and i was like what i was just in this mood of just saying yes to everything and so i said that's crazy sure you sure you want me to write it and he's like yeah uh and his name is eric smith and so he yeah a bunch of people wrote these short stories and they all take place in one night at a battle of the bands in high school and um and so, yeah, so that's the thing. But I think it's coming out in 2021. It's called Battle of the Bands. So it'll be easy to remember. Yeah. Uh, so that that's the only thing I have that's like officially coming out. And then I'm working on a bunch of stuff that is um, in limbo, kind of waiting for either, you know, agents and lawyers to figure stuff out or uh, or I'm just still writing and waiting for time to record. Oh. Does that make sense? sense? Yeah. 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 Lots of exciting things hopefully coming, though. Yeah. yeah it's been a it's been a painful year but it's also been a very fruitful idea it's been a weird there's a lot of things that could be amazing and huge in terms of like reach and scope and then and most of this is like tv and movie stuff mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. but if any of it actually you know happens i feel like there's four or five giant hurdles to get through before you and then the thing's got to be good mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. so it's it's a crapshoot whenever you get into that that world um but yeah so everything else is just just music for fun all right uh well that's where we'll end it uh thank you for sitting down with us this has been justin from ocean city soundtrack and we're the good noise podcast <laughs>